This video continues the discussion of methods used for correlation. So remember that correlation is used to determine if there's a relationship between two continuous variables. As one increases in value, does the other also increase, for example? So the previous video discussed a type of correlation called Pearson's product moment correlation. And this video introduces two non-parametric methods for correlation, Spearman's row and Kendall's tau. So just to recap the differences between correlation and regression. The two approaches are, are related to some degree, but are used for very different goals. Correlation is used to test for an association between the two variables when you don't expect there to be any causality. The two variables are often interdependent, so what they're driven together by some third factor often. You would choose regression instead if you think that changes in one variable are caused by changes in the other. So one variable is controlling the other. You may also use regression if your goal is prediction of one variable from the other. So Pearson's product moment correlation in the previous video is a parametric method, and that means that it requires that both variables be normally distributed, uh, for hypothesis testing purposes at least. Um, it also tests for a linear relationship, but what if the data don't follow a linear relationship? Or what if one or both of the variables are not normally distributed? That's where non-parametric correlation methods come in. So like Pearson's correlation, they require two independent continuous variables, and the goal is to test for an association between the variables with the null hypothesis that there's no association, or no relationship between the variables. Unlike Pearson's correlation, however, there's no assumption of normality in these tests and no requirement that the relationship be linear. We'll start with the Spearman rank order correlation because it's the most analogous to the Pearson method that you've learned about before. So the first step, like in many non-parametric tests, is to convert the actual values to their rank order. You may recall from earlier in the class that the Mann-Whitney U test and Kruskal-Wallis test, both non-parametric, also use rank order data. So in rank order, the smallest value gets a rank of 1, the second smallest is 2, and, and so forth. If the data is monotonic, which means the values always increase, or they could be monotonic if the values always decrease, the, there will be a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence between the ranks of one variable, Rx here, and the ranks of the other variable, Ry. So the correlation coefficient, which is called rho, the Greek letter rho, is simply calculated as the Pearson's product moment correlation of the rank order data instead of the raw data. So like Pearson's R, Spearman's rho can vary from minus 1 to positive 1, where minus 1 is perfect inverse correlation, 0 is no correlation at all, and 1 is perfect positive correlation. And as long as the sample size isn't too small, significance testing works in the same way as, as you learned for Pearson's R, converting to a t-statistic and assessing against the t-distribution. So the, the Kendall rank order correlation method is quite different and will, will require a little bit of, of explanation. So instead of using the covariance of the points, like in Pearson's or even Spearman with rank order, it just compares all possible pairs of points. So each point has an x and a y coordinate, so the method compares the x coordinate of one point, which we'll call point i, um, to the other point, and it compares which we can call point J, and it compares the y-coordinate of point I to the y-coordinate of point J. So if the x-coordinate for one point is greater than the x-coordinate for the other, and the y-coordinate is also greater than the y-coordinate for the other point, that pair of points is determined to be concordant. Likewise, if the x-coordinate for, say, point I is smaller than the x-coordinate for point J, and the y-coordinate is also smaller, so if both x and y are smaller in, in one point and in the other, it's also concordant. However, if the x-coordinate is smaller, but the y-coordinate is larger, or, alternatively, if the x-coordinate is larger and the y is smaller, that would be called discordant. So in the example given here with these three points, 1, 2, and 3, the pair that includes point 1 and point 2 is concordant, because the x and the y value of point 2 are both larger than the x and the y values of point 1. Similarly, the point 1, point 3 pair is also concordant for the same reason. The x and the y values for point 3 are greater. However, the point 2, point 3 pair is discordant 
Point 0.3 has a greater x coordinate, x is larger for point 0.3, but y is smaller in point 0.3 than it is in point 0.2. So that's concordant and discordant. In the Kendall's tau, the correlation coefficient is given the, the symbol tau, is calculated as the number of pairs that are concordant minus the number of discordant pairs divided by the total number of pairs that were examined. And so in this case, the value can also range from minus 1 to positive 1, like the other correlation coefficients. So which of these two methods should you choose? Well, for this class, you can use either. I, it, as long as you know to choose non-parametric correlation, I don't really mind which one you use. And in principle, it really shouldn't matter. You know, in principle, if your answer differs depending on which method you use, it's probably not very robust anyways. But there are some rules of thumbs or tips that, that some people will give. So because Spearman's row is based on the covariance of the ranks, and the covariance is calculated as deviations or the sum of products of deviations from the mean rank, it's more sensitive to outliers. Right? An outlier point will have a very large deviation from the mean and therefore will contribute a lot to the, the correlation. Kendall's tau weighs all discordances and concordances equally, no matter how much of an outlier that point might be. So Kendall's tau is perhaps somewhat better if you have some outlying points that might really affect your correlation. In contrast, because Kendall's tau treats all discordant points equally, that was a benefit before, but now it can be more sensitive to closely spaced points. Right? You might, might imagine that if, if two points are really close together, one they might end up being discordant even though it really should be concordant. You know, maybe there's just some uncertainty in the measurements, and so they'll just be mistakenly discordant. So in this case, if you're sort of less certain about how reliable those closely spaced points are, then maybe Spearman's row is better because they're going to contribute very little to the overall correlation. So as a final note of caution, all of these rank order methods have pretty low power if the sample sizes are quite small. And in some cases, if you have very small sample size, like six or five points, it's actually often, it may be impossible to find a statistically significant result, no matter how strong the correlation is. So when reporting the results of non-parametric correlation, you should follow the same format as for Pearson's correlation. Give a scatter plot of the data, report the type of test that you did, Spearman or Kendall, uh, the value of the correlation coefficient, whether it's rho or tau, and the p-value. So in these tests, the correlation coefficient is very important because it tells you how strong the relationship is and in what direction the relationship is, positive or negative. The p-value just gives you indirect evidence for the likelihood that the relationship exists, but what we really care about is how strong that relationship is. So that's why the correlation coefficient itself is so important. So the two non-parametric correlation tests in R use the same function that you learned for Pearson's correlation, core.test. So that they, of course, still require two numeric vectors as the input, variable on the x-axis, variable on the y-axis, the order doesn't matter, you put them in. But in this case, you have to specify method equals Spearman, in quotations, or method equals Kendall. And those names can be abbreviated. You can use method equals S or method equals K if, if you want as well. And the output will look very similar to the Pearson's output. Um, note that the most important value, the correlation coefficients rho or tau, are at the bottom. And also you may note that even though I used the exact same data, you get different numeric values. Right? The, these are calculated in different ways, and so they're not directly comparable to each other. You can compare one tau to another tau, or one rho to another rho, but you would never compare the absolute value of Spearman's row to the absolute value of Kendall's tau because they're just very different measures. And so in these tests you don't need to report the S given for Spearman's or the Z given for, for Kendall's, but you should report the correlation coefficient of course is very important and also the p-value.